Hello and welcome to Let's Play King's Curse 3, to Air is Human. When King's Curse 3 was released in October of 1986, fans everywhere were excited to continue the story of Daventry's royal family. Some people have even speculated that the Queen Velanese, Graham's new bride, would be the main character in this third chapter of the series. However, they were all disappointed when instead we got the story of the slave boy working for an evil wizard, seemingly entirely unconnected to the events of the previous games. It was a bit of a controversy back then, actually, but let's give this game the benefit of the doubt and see where these events will take us. Which we will soon find out in the uh, introduction. And there is our main character. Gwydion is a lonely lad of 17 who has lived for as long as he can remember with an evil and cruel wizard by the name of Mananan. Gwydion gazes upon the countryside of Luder with longing, wishing he were free to leave. But alas, such is not the case. Mananan treats the poor boy like his slave, ordering him about, constantly threatening him, and refusing to ever let him leave the premises. Often, Gwydion wonders who he really is, and how he came to live with the old wizard, but Mananan offers no help in that area. Suddenly, the front door opens and out stalks Mananan, the wizard. Gwydion! he shouts harshly. Uh-oh. Gwydion rushes to his side, afraid he may be in trouble. Why are you not working, boy? The wizard sneers. Gwydion mumbles a faint reply. The kitchen floor is filthy, Mananan grumbles. Go sweep it now! Turning on his heel, the wizard re-enters the house, slamming the door behind him. Such is the story of young Gwydion's life to this point. What's a poor boy to do? Oh well. In resignation, Gwydion obediently follows Manana into the house. And then it loops around. And we can start the game inside the house indeed. If you didn't watch the introduction, uh, Mananan will show up at this point to tell you what your chore will be. And I'm going to speed up the game first. And there are various chores he can actually tell you to do. If you've um, watched the introduction, I think he always tells you to sweep the kitchen. If um, you skip the introduction and you wait for him to show up here, he will... Um, give you other chores, and we may also have to do more chores later in the game. There's a whole bunch of different ones that we can do, but for now it seems that we have to sweep the kitchen. Exciting, isn't it? So we are a slave for Mananan, it seems, and we are 17 years old, which might end up being a bit of a problem. After all, in the manual we read that Mananan has a habit of killing his slaves when they reach 18, which means that we'd better escape, and we'd better do it quickly. So I guess um, we should just ignore Mananan and try to escape. You open the front door of the house and go outside. So let's try and... Uh, Go down the path to escape. This is a very da difficult and dangerous path to go down, by the way. Uh-oh. Mananan's eyes narrow to slits. Gwydion, you are forbidden to be here. I have a good mind to... His face softens as he continues. Well, maybe next time. For now, go home. And he deposits you back home. Do that too often and he will punish you more severely. And eventually he will actually kill you. Now we are actually uh, in the dining room, it seems. Let's take a look around. 
This is where Mananan eats his meals. You, of course, are not supposed to eat here. You eat in the kitchen. There is a pine table and benches large enough to seat at least ten people, but the wizard has never had any guests for dinner. Then why does he have such a big table? I don't know. And there's a cat. That detestable pet of Mananan's is a constant annoyance. You know, I like cats. I'm, in fact, a very big cat lover, as some of you may already know. But this particular cat is really, really annoying. And even deadly in some places. So, I have no uh, hesitation to uh, kick him. Meow! <laughs> Occasionally he'll block your path, and kicking him is a good way to get him out of the way. Can we pet him? The thought of doing anything nice to that obscene ball of fur makes you sick. Okay. There's apparently a cup on the table, so let's get into our habit of taking things with us and pick that up. You pick up the little tin cup and carry it with you. You must, however, be careful in this game, um, because... As the manual story stated, um, Mananan would punish his slaves severely for carrying even common items that might be used to make spells. Now, the manual contains a number of spells, which we'll uh, get to later, and lists their ingredients, so you have to be careful not to have any of these ingredients with you any time Mananan sees you. In addition, the inventory will always uh, mention that an item is dangerous by putting a star behind it. So we can see the cup is not dangerous. Mananan will not punish us for having the cup with us. But if we do get any dangerous stuff, if any uh, illegal stuff that Mananan does not want us to have, he will in fact punish us by killing us usually. There's a number of things you can do that will make him punish you in, in slightly less lethal ways. But having spell ingredients or any other attempt to, to do magic will lead to instant death. Um, now we are in the kitchen, it seems. You may wonder why I keep pausing when I'm talking. It's because uh, you may have noticed there is a timer on the top of the screen. There are a number of things in this game which are timed. And uh, I will explain what they are when it becomes important, but that means that I will, uh, rather than just letting the game run while explaining stuff, I will usually pause it when we uh, are in a hurry. And later on in the game, it might actually be the case that I'll have to wait a couple of times for a specific event to occur, and if that happens, then... I will, of course, fast forward through uh, that period, so you don't have to wait for it, too. Learning the timing of certain things, particularly Mananan's schedule, as we'll see later, is a very important part of this game, and you cannot complete the game without figuring out the, that schedule. Okay, we're in the kitchen now, which uh, apparently Mananan wants us to clean. This is the kitchen of the wizard's house. Other than your own bedchamber, this is the only place in the house that you feel you can call your own. The wizard rarely enters the kitchen. On cold days, the fireplace is a cozy place to sit. Is it now? Looks like there's some stuff on the table here. You use the heavy oak table when you prepare food for the wizard. Right now, there is a loaf of bread, some fruit, and a mutton chop on the table. I want those. None of those are actually illegal ingredients, so we can get them. And you don't need to type each of them, you can just do get food. You take the loaf of bread and carry it with you. You take the fruit and carry it with you. You take the mutton chop and carry it with you. The parser of this game has gotten a bit better, so it's a little bit more forgiving with trying things that are maybe not exactly what it would... Uh, would uh, would expect you to do. It's a little bit more flexible. 
this game uses one of the last versions of the AGI engine, uh, one of the most advanced ones, so it has more animation, more complex graphics than the previous two games, despite the fact that it still uses the old game engine, and is in fact the last game in the series to do so. There's a bucket. Do we need that? It's just our old oaken bucket. It looks more like it's made of metal, but anyway. It's of no use. If you say so, here's a broom. It doesn't look interesting. However, uh, let's try and sweep the kitchen before Manan gets mad and punishes us. Which he will, if you shirk on your chores. So yeah, we're doing some cleaning. It's like we're back in Space Quest as Roger Wilco. We're doing a pretty half-assed job of it, <laughs> to be honest, but anyway. This game is probably uh, one of my favorites, and it's certainly the one that I remember playing the most as a kid. The one that I that is actually the most nostalgic for me of all the Kings was games. And I really love this game. Um, unlike the uh, the first two, which I kind of like, but are not objectively that good, this game is the one where it really gets good, in my opinion. It is, however, also very difficult. Uh, Mainly because, again, you need to learn that uh, the, s the schedule of some of the timed things. It makes things very complicated. But it's mainly the addition of Mananen that really helps sell this game, because we have a, a good antagonist and a real threat. And let me tell you, that wizard sometimes just randomly shows up to uh, to check up on you. And that was scary when I was a kid. <laughs> it's more scary than Doom or whatever whenever that guy would show up and this evil theme music would play. Let's see, there's some other stuff here. On the wall, there's an iron rack hanging on the wall by the fireplace. Your trusty knife is hanging on the rack. Your wooden serving spoon is hanging on the rack. Those might be useful if we need to prepare food or something. You take the carving knife from the iron rack and take it and keep it with you. Again, none of these items are uh, dangerous yet. I guess the wizard does not fear us attacking him with a knife. Probably because he knows magic. Spoon! You take the wooden spoon from the iron rack and keep it with you. There's some stuff on the shelves here as well. The kitchen shelf holds many ingredients and kitchen implements for cooking. One useful item that catches your eye is the clay bowl you use for all, your, all of your mixing. Okay, well, that sounds useful then. You retrieve the clay bowl from the kitchen shelf and take it with you. Okay, well, we'll see if we um, can do anything else in this house, besides chores, in the next video.